Now, it seems like every arena in the world has a scary corner. A corner that your horse doesn't want to go into, doesn't want to stop in. He just wants to cut that corner and get going. Sometimes you don't even want to approach it. And that corner could be a stump when you're out on a ride or a bit of plastic or a letterbox for those countries that have letterboxes. You know, it could be all sorts of things. So I just thought I'd share with you one way of dealing with that. Now, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to push the horse into the thing they're scared of. So I'm not going to have them face the thing and add pressure to them. If they're already skeptical about it, and every time they look at it, I put pressure on them, they're not going to like it very much. So to introduce them to it, I'm kind of going to do the opposite. So my goal here is to have him stop in the corner. But I'm not going to ask him to stop in the corner. I'm going to ask him to go forward along the rail. And if he needs to come away from the rail, then he will. And he'll cut the corner. And I'll just allow him to do that. I'll be on a loose rein. I'm not going to wear out my aids by pushing him over. Um, I'll do that until he reaches the rail on the other side. He may cut out a little bit of the corner or a lot of the corner. Probably a little bit. And once, as soon as we get straight there, keeping in mind he's just turned right, I'm going to do an indirect rein and turn him left. And I'm going to release when he's looking in the direction of the thing that he doesn't want to go near. So I'm actually going to release and take pressure off him when he's looking at it. And he'll come out this way and he'll come out to the left and go too far and cut the corner most likely. Get to the rail. As soon as he's got to the rail where he's heading forwards, because he's gone left, I'm going to do the counterbalance, which is right. I'm going to turn him right through an indirect rein. So I'm doing it through a hindquarter yield. I get better control that way. And I release when he's looking at it. Well, at least that's what I'm going to try and do. So to start with here, we're going to walk along this rail. He's picked up on the corner. He's cutting the corner. <laughs> Quite a bit more than I thought he would. So he's not real happy about that. Uh, so this could be that we get to the next corner before I get to do this. <laughs> okay, so we come over here. So, wow, we've gone more than halfway along this rail. He went to the right. I'm going to go left, release. Okay, release as he was looking into that. Now he's going to come out here a little bit here. I'll try and be on this side of the camera. That may or may not work. So I'm ready to control, ready to correct if I need to, but I've still got a loose rein for now. So we make it here. We make it to the arena fence. He went left. I'm going to go right. And I release as he's looking down here. And he goes down oh, a few more steps. Okay. And then decides that he doesn't want any part of that. So, okay, he's going to come around here a bit. You can see he's getting up a little bit again. He's, oh, geez, I'm exposing that side to it. But now, you know, we're a few meters from where we landed before. So we've actually made a lot of progress here. So he straightens up, left and direct, roll the hindquarters, release as he's looking here. What I don't want to do is release when he's looking out there, okay? Now he's going, oh, I got pretty close, but I can't get any closer. And he comes out, and you can probably see he's getting up on his toes a little bit there. He's not real comfortable with that whole deal. So we'll come along here. He's doing a pretty good job. He's come in a little bit closer, so that's quite typical. Um, the two sides will not necessarily be even, so the path he takes going one way within his left eye may not be the path he can take with it in his right eye, okay, or vice versa for that matter. So he goes along. Now I should warn you, this could take quite a long time. It's certainly the first time you do it anyway. Now, he definitely wasn't going in there, but he's come just a little bit further this way. Not a lot of improvement that time. And all of a sudden you'll start making a lot more progress, a lot more, and then that progress will double and double. And that's typically how it goes. So he's getting a little braver here. Oh, definite stop. 
So I'm just going to sit. I'm going to do the same as I did back there. That's when things really started changing, is when we actually just sat there for a while. Things started changing for us. What I'd like to see, what I'd like the outcome here to be, is not a horse that backs away from it, but a horse that actually shows curiosity. Right now he's showing anxiety, he's showing some skepticism. Um, when he can show curiosity, then I know he's getting more confident. And I want him to get confident to go up and have a little look at that thing. And I know, uh, you know, oftentimes if a horse goes up there and touches it, it'll move, they'll take a jump. And in the normal realm of horse life, what would happen is they'd take a jump, they'd run off and then they'd come back again. Well, we don't really want them to run off and come back again. So we want to keep things a little more sedate than that. That's what they do on their own. But uh, we want to just take a little slower than that, okay? So we're giving them time to process. If I get in a bit of a hurry here, I could probably, you know, I probably could get this horse up there and next to it and standing next to it and that type of thing. Um, and I'd do it with a lot of tension. I'd be teaching him under tension and he would retain a lot of tension. And this is the type of thing that actually with this horse, I've really worked very hard to get out of him. He was, it was very natural for him to hold a lot of tension. You know, very high head carriage, feet tending to move a lot. He would move his feet, then think about it later. I want him to start to get to a point where he thinks about it first. So we've been utilizing strategies of advance and retreat. We've been giving him lots of time to think, um, and it's working. The thing that uh, I've never been regretful of is I've never been regretful for giving a horse time to think. I have at times been regretful for not giving them enough time to think. So well done my friend. We'll just allow him to do what he's doing. Processing here a little. There you go. Well done. Okay and then I'm going to ask him forwards again. And if he's looking out here he'll most likely go out here but what would be ideal is if he went a little further forwards and then probably went off. Um, but you might find he steps forward and shoots off to the right again. But we'll ask here. And he's walking here a little better. He's not um, quite as bouncy, not quite like a pogo stick this time. So I ride, roll those around and then release here. Now, interesting enough, he's a little further away than he was the last time I came this way. I can see my tracks here, and I can see he's just a little further away. He's going to make it to about the same spot, I guess. Get to about here, roll him around again. And of course, as you get closer, the hindquarter yields become more frequent because as soon as I hit the rail, I'm rolling the hinds again. And it's a pattern that he can learn. So it's not this, just this one occurrence, it's a pattern he can learn. And the first time you do it, you're going to have to hang in there because it's going to take a while. Unless it's something very, very mild, and, and that's fine. You know, that's great to practice things with things that are really mild. Things they're not too worried about, just they're a little skeptical to begin with. But if it's something there, oh, there's a bit of a change. If it's something they're really worried about, it's going to take a good while. And the end result should be them getting a lot more confident. Now, he's made a lot of progress here. He's come up a, a good way from where his track was. There you go, he's just clearing his mind now. Um, and he's going to come up. So he's confident enough at least to approach and, and look at this thing in the scary corner. What on earth is that dragon there in the scary corner? And he's hanging out here a little bit. So you see, it was very different from pressuring him to approach. Pressuring him from, to approach the thing that bothers him. It's kind of the opposite, isn't it? I'm, I'm putting the pressure on when I yield his hindquarter around, and I'm doing it at a point where he can cope with that. So the response is actually quite good. On a horse that I have developed that yield on, the response is quite good. And then oh, I can't go any further, but because you're not pushing me there, because you're not holding me in there, I can manage myself. So they're, they're managing themselves at a distance of their choosing. If I bring them past that, I would have to be do, do more managing myself. So I'd have to be managing my horse. 
So we're going to take a little bit of a shared role. I'm going to ask him to manage himself. I'm just going to set it up to where he can get closer and closer to these things. So I was very happy with that uh, little bit of progress there. We just kind of wandered up to it. Who's your friend? <laughs>